Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Goddess Glow podcast by Ray Grillo. I'm excited to have you here today because I am going to talk to you guys behind my mindset with my weight release um, and my journey to what I would call just my highest self or like higher self perfect dream body. Um, And it's always evolving always evolving because I always have new goals and such. However, this is about my journey and how I just became more happy with my body, my temple, my thing that connects me here to this plane of existence. And um, I feel like this is a amazing topic to talk about because my mindset before I just had no self-love for myself whatsoever. Uh, And I know that a lot of people could relate. And in my case, I ended up what I call releasing weight because losing weight implies that you lost something and you have to find it. So this is just part of one of the things that I say is releasing weight Um, I also omit the term dropping weight because dropping implies that you have to pick it back up. And so uh, I, once you release it, it's gone, you let it go and it's recycled energy and however way that it wants to be recycled. And um, so that is just like one of the little mindset tricks that I used in order to become just happier with my body and content with it. Um, Do I still have days where I'm just like, like, what is it doing? Like, why is it like looking this way? Yeah, of course. However, it's a lot less um, than like the constant, like not feeling comfortable in my own like meat suit essentially is what it is. And so That's what I hope that you guys can get out of this podcast today is somewhat of a mindset switch so that you're not like how I was just suffering. It was suffering. I was choosing to suffer and not love my body the way that it should be loved and that I should love myself, my whole entire self. And uh, some of you may know if you follow my Instagram at Ray Grillo, um, that I have my new products releasing. And so uh, I have my necklaces, my aromatherapy necklaces, and my essential oils being released. The essential oils that I have chosen, a lot of it deals with like love, sensuality, sexuality, and being more in tune with the feminine energies. Also, I have great essential oils for impasse and those who suffer from anxiety, social anxiety, whatever type of anxiety and depression. And also you can use these essential oils to rub on you um, or as a substitute for perfume because I have such sensitive skin. I tend to not use a lot of like bath stuff or body stuff. And so that is releasing this month. And I'm super excited because it's been such a journey and finding the products, finding the perfect ones. I have little roll-ons that will have essential oils in it and are infused with crystals, healing crystals like rose quartz and amethyst and sodalite. And so it's going to be absolutely perfect for the empath. And yeah, I'm really excited to share that with you. You can also find it at goddess underscore underscore glow underscore collection on Instagram for now. And uh, my website as well, raygrillo.com. And you guys can get the scoop on it at my Instagram when it's finally launched. Uh, Okay, so with that said, I'm going into my weight releasing journey. And so some of you guys may want to even just like gain weight. And so this is all about just becoming more happy with your body. I guess I should call it my self-love journey for my body or self-love or body love. (laughs) Body love, just love all of me. And so 
Um, when I was with my husband, or I struggled. I struggled with my weight since high school. I struggled with my weight, or I should say my image and my body image since forever. Honestly, I always had um, a bigger set on front <laughs> um, ever since I was little. And so my grandmother would always tell me to cover up, make sure I'm covering up, even if I just wanted a cute top. And it's like on anyone else, it would look normal. However, on me, it didn't look normal. And so, well, it showed a lot, it, showed, it would show cleavage or even what now I would not deem a lot of cleavage. It would just be like a little whatever. Um, however, it's like that part of me was shamed. And so that was something that sort of started my, my body image and how I saw myself and how I looked at myself and how I felt shameful of my body. And a lot of women I'm sure can gravitate towards that. And also men as well. I'm, um, women per se however I know like men have the whole stigma where it's like you have to look like the Goku from Dragon Ball Z and stuff so men have a different side of it and women also have um their side of it with being all sexualized and stuff in magazines and um so that started it and moving on into like later on it was just me with my friends I always felt like I was like the bigger one out of my friends however that was not the case <laughs> um I just looked normal like a normal teenager and I was in shape I did sports I was really active and then it wasn't until I got with my boyfriend I think and I stopped giving myself love I gave up my hobbies this is like another thing I'll get into later on about dating and relationships and losing yourself in relationship, especially as a wounded empath. <laughs> um, however, and wounded like healer. However, uh, that's just how it went. I would get into relationships. I would focus on boys or guys or whatever, and I would get comfortable or I would just stop focusing on myself. And I would not take care of myself. I wouldn't be giving that love that I would give to myself. Um, I would give it to other people. Um, if it wasn't a boy, it would be a friend or attempting to do that with my family. And so I uh, just had a problem going back and forth between my body image and working it out. Yes, baby. Where did I see your water? Here? No, grab your water. It's fine. Right here. Okay. Okay, my little one's still up. <laughs> and so he's being really awesome and quiet in the room right now while I record this. Um, so yeah, that was my journey. And then when I, later on, I got pregnant. And uh, like in my when I turned 20, when I, right when I was, right before I turned 21, like a week or two before I found out I was pregnant and then I was vegan, like a high carb vegan. I was losing weight back then. I biked to work. I would bike home. Um, I was very active again and I was getting to a state where I was getting happy with my body. However, I ended up getting pregnant and I gained so much weight from my pregnancy. Uh, at the end of it, I was 242 pounds. I had gained from like 185, then like it was like 60. Oh my gosh. <laughs> it was like 60 pounds, almost 60 pounds, like 50 something pounds. And um, so yeah, I was not happy with my body at all. And then also came like the postpartum depression. I breastfed. And I thought with breastfeeding, it would help me lose or release weight. It did not. <laughs> and so I uh, would attempt to do yoga and stuff afterwards. However, being with my husband, um, I was not, I did not put any love into myself at all. 
Uh, as you guys know, my journey, I had a narcissistic husband and I would get comments all the time about my weight, about how I should be working out. And it was like a little bit crazy because it's like I wanted to eat healthy. However, he would not support me in that. And I signed up for the gym and he said I didn't need a gym. And so it was very conflicting. And um, it was very difficult for me to stick to my goal, especially when the stuff that I wanted to do uh, was put down all the time. And that's not, again, like I could go around blaming other people. However, at the end of the day, it's still my fault. I'm the one that fed my mouth and allowed myself to get to where I was. Um, and then starting out, like I would go to the gym with my mom. Uh, she's the one who got me to sign up and I would go stagnantly it would just depend. I was always tired or I was always this, or if I could find the time to make some time for myself, I would go to the gym. And then also I would want to go like Friday nights, like when no one else was around because I was so embarrassed that I was just so overweight. And I just kept thinking back at how in shape I was back in high school. And so uh, that happened. And then I ended up leaving my husband and a lot of it was just anger. Uh, at the time, especially with the names that he would call me um, and the fact that he, towards the end, I found that there was other messages between other women. And so I, um, I was just so angry and I used that anger going towards my workouts. And that fueled me for a while. However, maybe you guys can resonate with how it, <laughs> anger could only fuel you, fuel you for so long before you get burnt out. And so I ended up plateauing. My work would do, challenged me to do a half marathon. And that was crazy. I ended up finishing. And thank you and props to my friend Jackie for being there for me. <laughs> um, so yeah, I would like that sort of started my journey and I, and, uh, I had more time afterwards after leaving my husband for myself. And so I would make it a point to go to the gym again, Friday nights, Saturday nights, Sunday nights. And I just wasn't seeing the results and I was eating crappy. I was eating really bad still. I didn't totally love myself yet and I didn't understand it. Um, all of it was just uh, for the vanity of it and just wanting to look better to make my ex see what he had lost. And so that was my mindset behind it. And that wasn't a great why. And there was no like self-love towards myself. It was just all like just revenge and resentment and a lot of anger. And that obviously did not work for me because with me harboring all of that, um, anger is like one of the high, I think it's like the higher of the low vibrational emotions. And so it just did not do well on my body. Um, also I heard a thing where impasse, they usually are a heavier set, especially if they are with a narcissist. Um, they, uh, have that cushion for all of the toxic blows that or energetic blows that you would get from just abuse. And so usually typically empaths have that. <laughs> I don't know if it's true. Uh, however, that's what I heard. And so, I mean, yeah, I, I could see it for me, for myself and it resonated with me. So that's what I went with. Um, and it wasn't until later where I, uh, I was still angry. And then after my husband passed away, that's when I sort of shifted my mindset. We stayed married. So I separated from him. However, we stayed married. And so he ended up passing in the December of 2019. And so after that, it's just like the, the anger dissipated. I wasn't angry anymore. There's no reason to be angry anymore because there was no one to really be angry at. And so I really had to do some like deep diving and um, just start putting in a lot of self-love and self-care to myself. Uh, and it had to start off just implementing small habits. I, uh, instead of 
having like say burgers with buns and stuff, I would switch it over and I would do something healthier. Um, personally, I, anything with bread, like wheat, I should say, just like bread, breads or pastas, I typically stay away from. I'm more likely to eat pasta. Um, however, like those processed stuff, I'm just not, not big on. I don't recommend eating it all the time um, if you are looking to release weight. However, you know, if you want that, you know, junk in the trunk, <laughs> then that's really good for you. So I'm not saying it's totally bad. You should, of course, get carbs. However, I would get my carbs other ways. I would get my carbs in with fruit. Um, honestly, I have no problems with a freaking carrot either. It's like they have all these like diets and like low carb, whatever. Just stay away from bread, stay away from pasta and add a lot of leafy greens to your foods. And so that's what I ended up doing. Initially, like no diet ever worked out. So no diet ever works out and it takes patience. A lot of people don't have patience. It's like they get mad because they only lost two pounds in a month when their goal was 10. However, it's like, hello, you lost two pounds. Or I should say, you released two pounds. What the heck? Like you should still be celebrating. Of course you didn't meet 10 pounds and Susan over there did. Good for her. Like you should celebrate with her because that's that's an amazing feat. However, it's like, you know, you have a different body, you have different chemistry you're at a different point in your journey. And so people will get upset about that. And it's like, okay, come on. Like you still are making progress. And also, do you feel better? And I started basing it off of like whether I felt great or not. And now it's like, I do not like to eat crappy food. Um, I mean, during certain times of the month, <laughs> I love to. However, it's like, I would rather eat healthier now and stay away from stuff like fast food if I just feel better. I just feel better and I like to feel good. Uh, at this point in time. And I love myself enough to do that and honor that and to take care of my body. And so there's that shift, implementing the small habits, like just little things like chips, like you go, you don't have to like restrain yourself either from eating your favorite foods. It's just finding like healthier alternatives to do so. And you can get really creative instead of like chips and hummus, you could do cucumbers and hummus. There's still that crisp and it's pretty good. <laughs> I like it. <laughs> um, and instead of like, I don't know, like bread, I would do potato. So I would make my own baked potatoes instead of using chips or something. Um, from the store, processed foods. <laughs> and just like there's like Trader Joe's has healthy, like healthier um, options. I wouldn't necessarily say that they're totally healthy. Uh, however, it's like, okay, well, this has chia seeds in it. This has flax seeds in it. It's a potato chip and it has those things. Okay, well, I'll be getting some nutritional value from this versus like a bag of Lay's chips, which is just like oily. So there's just different options and different switches and do little bits at a time. Again, with that patience is having patience with yourself and not beating yourself up and being in those low vibrational energies. You want to be, so like a low vibrational energy or emotion would be shame or guilt or um, fear or whatever else. And so it's, or anger. And so it's better for you to give you give yourself that love, be more loving, be more grateful, and have more of that and joyful, have more of that higher vibrational frequency within your own being, so that all of the things that are low vibrational within your life right now just fall away. The whole point is to mostly stay in a higher vibrational state. And I typically would rate myself a nine. Before I used to be at a three, like that's low, low, low vibration. <laughs> so if you rate yourself from a one to 10, like what would you rate your overall life at? And if you're choosing or saying like lower vibrational, then there has to be a shift. And obviously you're staying in like depressed, 
you're feeling anxious, you're feeling shameful, you're feeling guilty, more so those emotions, then you would be feeling joy or gratitude or loving. And those are higher vibrational states. And I can say, for the most part now, I am at a nine, eight or nine, typically. And sometimes I will fall down to like a six or five. Uh, very rarely. <laughs> However, it does happen. I'm not going to lie. And it's it's normal to fluctuate. However, it's like I'm able to get myself back up to a nine within hours, usually. Um, so it's if you are looking at yourself and you're putting yourself down more so, you're not following a diet, like have that patience and start just giving yourself the love. Just start loving yourself now where you're at right now and do away with all the shame and guilt and whatever and anger that you're feeling towards yourself or depression or pity, whatever it might be. Just start just loving yourself. Enjoy it. Like I'm sure you look like a bad bitch or hunk anyway. <laughs> so um, once you start like implementing small habits and it's just like drinking more water, dropping the soda, just do a little bit at a time, uh, make little goals, the little smaller habits versus something extravagant. Like I'm going to lose 30 pounds in a whole month doing this and like doing something that's totally different than the lifestyle that you're doing now. It's a shifting. You're going to be shifting. Of course you can shift faster than others. However, that shift is going to be gradual and you're typically and you're going to want to move into it you want a healthy lifestyle not just a whole like an instant gratification thing because the instant gratification is not going to last for one you might feel good for a little bit however as it prolongs you're going to feel crappy <laughs> you're going to feel shitty because you're not working on your internal beingness. You're not working on that consciousness, that frequency within you. And you're not loving yourself. It's more so, I would say, my personal experience is a vanity thing. Um, it's an ego thing. So when you do away with that and you start getting really in tune with like who you actually are and your, your soul and giving yourself that love, it's a lot easier to... Uh, to do that because when you love yourself, you know you deserve it. You know you deserve the body that you want. You deserve to have a healthy beingness. You like deserve to have the things that you want in your life and you deserve to have a healthy, thriving body. That's just that. Um, so another shift that I had to go through also was thinking of my highest and best self. I kept identifying myself as this person who was just stuck at this weight. I am just a person who's 200 pounds. I am just a person at 210 pounds. And this is what I identify myself as. And I just worked all the time and I didn't love myself enough. And I identified myself as someone who put all of their work towards their career versus loving themselves. I was just, I was at the time I was a floral designer. I was head of the floral department and each person I saw, they worked an enormous amount of hours and floor designers usually do, especially if you're running a flower shop, um, on the Las Vegas strip. And it was that identity that I stuck with. And so I was a floral designer and typically floor designers work on their feet all day. However, they didn't really have a lot of time to like for themselves and for their family. Uh, so uh, I just did not put any of that love towards myself. And I identified also myself as someone who just didn't eat healthy. And I started having to switch that around. I also smoked cigarettes too at the time. Um, and that I smoked for like 14 years. And so I had to switch my, I had to think of my highest and best version of me. Like, what did that look like? What does my highest and best, best version of me look like? It looked like someone who's in shape, who lift weights, who works out frequently, who takes care of themselves, who loves themselves, and also does not smoke. Oh, maybe you smoke and dabble in marijuana. However, <laughs> not cigarettes. <laughs> cigarettes are so bad. That's not what a healthy person does. I started identifying myself as a person who is healthy. And so 
more and more as I gave myself that love that and just being grat like grateful that this body that I have, I'm able to experience the beautiful world around me, the more gratitude I put into my body and the more gratitude I put into each and every workout and the love that I put into each and every day for myself, I just started noticing the weight just kept dropping and dropping and dropping. And of course I had my friends who would hype me up. It's like when I had my down days, like they would be there and they would hype me the fuck up, <laughs> especially my, again, my friend, Jackie, however, you know, shout out to DJ Mojito and Raven, uh, Candy Queen and Des DaCosta. Uh, I just, I had them to help me find that love for myself because they also, they loved me and it's like, you know, and it's an energy exchange. And so, and they, I find or I feel they have a lot of love to give. And so also being able to receive that love from others and like use that to fill up my cup when I was unable to fill up my love cup. Um, and so that was mostly the biggest thing for me was really I started to identify myself as someone who was just healthy. And now it's like, if you ask any of my friends, I am probably like the healthiest eater <laughs> uh, that you can meet. And am I at my perfect body weight or whatever right now? No, like I know that I can keep improving. However, I am a lot more confident and I love myself. I can truly honestly say that I love my body. I am perfectly fine with my body and yeah, I have stretch marks and I have loose skin, especially after having my linen bug, my little love bug. However, it's like I turn it around, I see it as like, you know what? I'm a strong person and I gave birth to an amazing little human being. And I am a person who released a tremendous amount of weight and I did not do it fast. However, I did it and I feel so much better about myself. I feel extremely healthy, like I'm able to keep up with my son now. And um, especially stretching is like, I'm able to bend a lot more. I'm able to run my mile a lot faster. Oh, that's one more thing. <laughs> Instead of worrying about the scale, stop worrying about the scale. Do not do it, get that worry out. I honestly don't even know how much I weigh right now. I know I started at 242 because I used to weigh myself a bunch back then. However, now I'm like, I think I weigh like, 170 something I'm around there <laughs> I'm around there somewhere and um I uh, would start to weight lift I lift heavy shit <laughs> that's my thing to you lift heavy shit if that resonates for you I also run uh do like hit workouts cardio um stairmaster However, find something that you love to do. Again, be in that vibration of love. Whatever resonates with you is the best thing for you. Me personally, I love lifting heavy. And I saw a power lifter one time and I was like, that's my, that's my goal. I want my body to be exactly like that. Um, however, in my own way. It was just like, you know, the big thighs, the big legs. I just like, oh, and then the, <laughs> and then the shoulders, like that's what I focus on. Um, and I just find it fun. I enjoy it. I enjoy lifting weights. It's fun for me. So I do it and I do it a lot. <laughs> um, so with each and every workout, I improve my performance. And so like my running, my mile, I right now am working towards the eight minute mile and I'm at like 10, 30 something. And I started off at a 16 minute mile. I would have to stop for a little bit, you know, walk, and then I would run again. Now it's like, I'm freaking sprinting at the end. I'm like, I want to get my eight minute mile. <laughs> like, let's go. And, um, and so I started focusing on my performance versus versus the scale. The scale moves slowly. Don't worry about the scale. If you want something that's a positive reinforcement, do that. I also ended up getting a sweet sweat, waist trimmer. 
does it work? I don't know. I like to enjoy it. <laughs> like they say, well, the weight trimmers don't really help you lose fat. Okay, cool. Well, you know, after a day of drinking, I like to put my waist trainer on and use that for, <laughs> use that to detox. And also it's a great positive reinforcement. It's like afterwards, like you rip it off, you see all the sweat and you're like, man, I put in some motherfucking work today. Like I'm excited for this. And so it's just like finding little things that get you excited and happy about your weight loss or weight releasing or gaining or just body loving journey and being excited about it and being happy and being loving towards yourself. And so those are like the biggest things I feel that helped me on my weight releasing journey. And just know that you deserve to have the body that you want. You deserve to feel comfortable in your own body and to also love your own body unconditionally because your body is your temple. Your body is what keeps you here. And also when your body is feeling good, you're able to be in the present moment more likely. (laughs) You're more likely to be here now versus somewhere else in the past, somewhere else in the future, you're going to be here now because your body feels good. And so that's why it's so important for you to work on your body loving goal and your physical goals, because your body keeps you here in this plane. Your body is always in the present moment. And when you feel good and when your body feels good, you're more likely to be present. And that's the whole point is being aware of your thoughts within the present moment and allowing yourself just to be here and enjoy the moment each and every passing moment. And you deserve to. So that is where I'm going to conclude this podcast and thank you so much for listening again go follow my goddess underscore glow underscore collection and you can also follow me on ray grill on instagram i have my youtube this podcast will also be posted on youtube and yeah that's it for now so thank you again and i will talk to you guys later bye